Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue with the, uh, the central limit theorem and its applications. I'll, th this example I have taken from uh, Sheldon Ross's book on probability theory. Uh, see the idea here is that uh, civil engineers believe that w the amount of weight in units of 1000 pounds that a certain span of a bridge can withstand without structural damage resulting is normally distributed with mean 400 and standard deviation 40. So, uh, the, the weight which the uh, bridge can stand with withstand uh, is, is a, no, a random variable uh, you know and so it is normally distributed with mean 400 and uh, deviation 40. Uh, suppose that the weight again in units of 1000 pounds of a car is a random variable with mean 3 and standard deviation 0.3. So, the different cars will have different weights. So, therefore, again uh, we have treated this as a random I mean this example the weight of a car is uh, treated as a random variable and therefore, the distribution and the distribution is uh, normal approximately normal with mean 3 and uh, standard deviation uh, 0.3. Okay. Uh, how many cars would have to be on the bridge span for the probability of structural damage to exceed 0.1. Okay. So, at a particular time how many cars are there and then uh, the uh, the weight of these cars uh, exceeds the uh, weight which can uh, cause the structural damage and so we want the probability of this whole random uh, of this event to be more than 0.1 so we want to estimate that we want to estimate the number of cars that would be on the uh, bridge so uh, so that the structural damage can occur okay so uh, we begin by defining uh, pn as the uh, probability uh, that there are n cars on the bridge whose weight exceeds w, because that is where the, so the event is this that when it exceeds w the structural damage can occur. Okay. Uh, so, therefore, uh, this is same as p n. So, this is x 1 plus x 2 plus x n greater than or equal to w and that would be um, uh, you can rewrite this as probability x 1 plus x 2 plus x n minus w greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now, uh, x i is uh, where x i is the uh, weight of the i th car, right? x i denotes the weight of the i th car. So, this is the total weight of the uh, n cars which are on the bridge at that time. So, and therefore, um, uh, by um, central limit theorem, because for n large we have said that when they are um, identically distributed random variables independent random variables, because the weight of each car is independent of the other. So, then uh, sigma x i um, sigma x j j varying from 1 to n would be uh, approximately normal with mean 3 n and standard uh, and variance 0 0.09 n. Standard deviation is 0.3. So, the variance of the weight of a car is 0 0.09 and therefore, uh, the variance of the n cars is 0 0.0 n 9. Right. So, this is approximately this. Now, w is independent of the x i's because the weight that the bridge can withstand um, is independent of the um, weights of the individual cars. And therefore, um, when I write sigma x i minus w, this is also approximately normal. Yes. And we will again revisit all these uh, summation of uh, uh, random variables and their distributions, but right now we have enough uh, machinery with us to say that sigma x i minus w, because this is normal approximately uh, normal, this is normally distributed. So, sigma x i minus w is also approximately normally distributed and the expectation or the mean of this uh, normal variate is uh, 3 and minus 400 with minus w. So, mean of sigma x i i varying from 1 to n is 3 n and this is 400. And the variance of course, becomes with a plus sign comes with a plus sign. So, because they are independent. So, variance of this plus uh, variance of w which is 1600. So, this is the variance and therefore, I can standardize. So, the whole idea is that uh, this is my uh, 
this is the variate I am looking at and I have said that this is standard, uh, this is normally distributed with mean 3 and minus 400 and variance this. So, when I standardize, I will say this minus the mean divided by the divided by the standard deviation. So, that is standardized. So, now z is a standard normal variate and the event. So, when I standardize this, uh, the, this probability now can be written as probability uh, z greater than or equal to. So, on this side it will be minus of 3 and minus 400, I mean bracket minus 400 divided by the standard deviation. right? So, when I uh, do this operation, I mean this probability is the same as this probability. right? because this I have standardized the uh, normal variate uh, the to, norm, to, be, uh, to a stand, uh, normal variate, uh, standard normal variate by dividing by the uh, by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation. So, therefore, this is equal to this right and so <coughs> z is approximately normal and now we want this probability to be greater than or equal to 0 0.1 yes. And so, uh, we look up the tables for the standard normal and we find that when z is greater than or equal to 1.28, this is approximately 0.1. Okay. So, from the normal tables, I get that this number should be 1.28 for this to be uh, equal to 0.1 and therefore, greater than or equal to you want. See, the whole idea is that if the number of cars n is such. So, now, um, this number I can say that is equal to 1.28. So, therefore, um, if you take it equal to 1.28, then you get the uh, you get an approximation for n and in the sense that if you write less than or equal to 1.28, then obviously, this probability will be larger and therefore, this will the whole thing will still be larger than 0 0.1. This is the whole idea. So, I get a value of n by equating this to 1.28 right? and then my n should be greater than or equal to 117. So, here of course, uh, this is a little complex thing to solve, but you can do it or you can you know uh, start by uh, putting in values of n and then you can find out for which value of n this is you know al almost equal to this or uh, little less than this. So, one can there are lot of numerical ways of actually getting the value of n which satisfies this inequality. So, we can do that right and therefore, it turns out that n greater than or equal to 117 satisfies the above inequality. And so, uh, that means, if there are more than uh, 117 cars, then the structural damage may occur with probability 0 0.1. So, there is a chance of 1 in 10 that uh, the uh, bridge will suffer uh, structural damage. Okay. So, I, this was um, another interesting example. I, I mean, actually, uh, you can see the application uh, in the sense that and then uh, also I chose this example for the reason that um, this also is a random variable and therefore, uh, to convert this event to this event and then uh, to reduce this uh, to stand to uh, use the central limit theorem and uh, uh, transform this to a standard normal variate and therefore, uh, get your uh, estimate of the probability that uh, structural damage will uh, be caused to the uh, it may uh, the bridge may suffer structural damage. So, the interesting example of the central limit theorem. Uh, this is um, uh, in a town of 20,000 people 44 percent support an upcoming referendum vote. You see say for example, the uh, currently the uh, hot thing is um, is uh, uh, is An Anna Hazare going to form a political party or not. So, you might uh, take a referendum that means, you might uh, ask people to vote on this whether he should do it or not. So, uh, let us say and it is uh, the, the feeling is there. So, maybe this is a small town and uh, the feeling is that uh, 44 percent will only support the upcoming referendum, but um, so then what you do is uh, you conduct a pre vote poll. So, this is happens very often media person do it lot of uh, magazines uh, they do it they conduct their own pre vote poll to get a feeling or the opinion and uh, uh, use of the eligible voters in the town and um, surveys 100 people. So, therefore, if you are conducting a pre vote poll of the eligible voters in the town and surveyed 100 people what is the probability that the that uh, the um, a survey will show that the referendum will pass. 
Okay. So, uh, one needs to understand what we mean by the referendum will pass. Uh, in order for a referendum to pass, it requires a majority vote or 51 percent. See, even though the feeling is there that 44 percent support, but you never know at the time of the voting, um, more people may vote for the referendum and so on. So, therefore, um, when you conduct a pre-vote poll and uh, you want to uh, and you have you, sur you surveyed let us say 100 people, then um, if in that uh, pre-vote poll it turns out that uh, 51 percent or s uh, more support the referendum, then uh, you can say that okay, our pre-vote poll uh, suggests that uh, the referendum will pass. But actually when the uh, uh, voting is done and then if uh, more than 51 percent people who have voted people who have voted, the 51 percent of those people, uh, if they have supported the referendum, the referendum will pass. So, right now, this is just conducting a pre vote survey uh, of 100 people. So, then you want to know what is the probability that the referendum will pass. Okay. So, therefore, the question is and therefore, that means, uh, out if you are taking a referendum, uh, if you are taking a survey of 100 people, then you want 51 people to uh, out of those 100 people, 51 should say yes for the referendum or support the referendum. This is what you want to do, uh, find out. So, the probability. So, therefore, um, uh, one can uh, model the situation uh, using binomial random variables. So, x i is, uh, I mean, if, if the uh, uh, person supports, if the, uh, if the voter or the people you are surveying, they support the uh, referendum, then uh, x i will be counted as a success, otherwise it is a failure. right? So, um, uh, you will say that sigma x i, i varying from 1 to 100 is binomial 100 with uh, uh, mean as 0 0.44 into 100, right? because probability of uh, uh, a success that means your p is 0 0.44. So, uh, okay, I am writing here, I should have written only 0 0.44, okay, this is not, uh, this is only, yeah. So, the p is 0 0.44 and then the mean of the binomial distribution will be n p and you want to find out the probability that the people that you are surveying, the 100 people that you have surveyed, uh, would they, how many uh, would support, that means number of successes here should be greater than or equal to 51, right, because then the referendum will pass. Uh, so, uh, and that is why I chose this, because this is depicting a new situation and the, uh, we are just trying to model it uh, through uh, this thing here and applying central limit theorem. So, this is the whole idea and therefore, um, so I hope this is clear that uh, this is um, sigma x i, i varying from 1 to 100 should be greater than or equal to 51. So, from this 100 people, if they get a feeling that uh, 51 or more will support the referendum, then you know they can sort of. Uh, advertise and they can inf try to influence people and say that our pre vote poll uh, says that uh, referendum will pass and so on. Right. Okay. So, standardizing this variate uh, sigma x i i when from 1 to 100, this will be sigma x i i when from 100 minus 44, the mean of uh, this random variable which is n p 44 divided by the variance which is n p q. Uh, so, 44 into point 56, because your p is 0 0.44, so q is 0 0.56. So, therefore, this is your uh, variance and so under root of that the standard deviation. So, therefore, this probability uh, is equal to this probability. So, this is greater than or equal to 51 minus 44 upon under root 44 into 0 0.56. Now, uh, as uh, I have been telling you that whenever you want to uh, approximate a binomial probability by you know standardizing the random variable and using a, a standard normal uh, probability, then you should also uh, use the uh, continuity correction factor, which I have not done here. So, anyway, so therefore, uh, so that would be if you are saying gr greater than 51, then it will be uh, 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 40, 50.5, that would be the right figure. But anyway, so you can do that computation uh, later on. So, right now the whole idea is just to uh, see that. So, therefore, um, uh, uh, so uh, to get a feeling for the kind of numbers that you have that will the referendum pass or not. So, uh, this is this and therefore, um, 
under root of this uh, comes out to be 4.96. So, this probability and this is a standard normal variate. So, therefore, probability uh, this is equal to or we are approximating this probability by probability z greater than or equal to uh, 7 upon 4.96 which comes out to be uh, 1.41. So, z greater than or equal to 1.41. So, this probability which from the tables gives you the number 0 0.079. So, therefore, this is a very small probability and hence the chance of the referendum passing is very slim. When the town is 20,000 and you are only surveying 100 people and when you know that the uh, uh, chances of you know the, there is a uh, 44 percent support the upcoming referendum. So, the probability of uh, uh, you know uh, 51 percent or more support the referendum is small and that is reflected here. So, through the central limit theorem you have made this approximation to the probability through the required probability and it turns out to be 0 0.079. So, the chances of uh, when you survey the uh, 100 people and ask for their opinion whether they support the referendum or not, it uh, shows that uh, the chances are very small for the uh, people. Okay. So, again uh, I mean one can go on and on about uh, uh, the applications of central limit theorem and how to various different situations you can apply it. Okay. Then I want to get back to uh, uh, another thing where we had also sort of use, we had used the central limit theorem, but probably did not uh, yeah and I had said that we will prove it later on. So, um, but uh, I just want to add uh, a word of caution also to it. So, here this is that um, we had x equal to uh, x is a binomial n comma p and uh, then we said that if you want to compute this probability x less than or equal to s. Uh, then you will have to compute uh, these numbers and this can be quite messy right. Uh, i varying from 0 to s n c i p raise to i 1 minus p raise to n minus 1. So, this can be quite cumbersome to compute, but then we said that we can approximate it by standardizing uh, this thing and uh, so here this is x minus n p divided by under root of n p q the standard deviation and then this is less than or equal to s minus n p. Now, you add 0 0.5 remember I had talked about the correction uh, factor when you uh, bi binomial is a, a discrete random variable and we are approximating it by a continuous distribution. So, therefore, uh, this cor continuity correction factor is also added. So, you have 0 0.5 and this. So, therefore, um, this probability this cumbersome thing can be approximated by uh, uh, the normal probability which is s minus n p plus 0 0.5 upon under root n p q. So, and we look up the normal tables and we can uh, compute this number. Now, the thing is that of course, uh, when you are approximating the question does arise how good an approximation it is and um, see uh, what happens is that when for a binomial distribution if your p is close to half then uh, the uh, binomial distribution is symmetric right in the sense that the values keep on increasing and decreasing in a symmetric manner. Uh, and then because normal itself is also a, a symmetric distribution about its mean. Um, therefore, um, a normal distribution will give a good approximation as long as your um, p is close to half, because then uh, you are uh, approximating a symmetric distribution, a discrete symmetric distribution by a continuous symmetric distribution. And so, uh, but when you when your p is away from half, then your binomial will be skewed, maybe to the right or the to the left. And in that case. Um, uh, it is not necessary that your normal distribution will give you a good approximation of the binomial probabilities. Now, um, uh, it is said often that if your n p is greater than or equal to 30 or n p into 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10, then um, uh, the central limit theorem will always give you a good approximation of the binomial probabilities, but um, th these are empirical statements. Right. In some cases, it may turn out that uh, when you have n p greater than or equal to 30 or n p into 1 minus p greater than or equal to 10, you may get good approximations, but uh, it cannot be said that this will happen all the time, because certainly symmetry plays a role. And uh, uh, for p small and n large, uh, 
such that n p equal to lambda is moderate. So, then in that case um, Poisson approximation may be a good approximation. And I had, uh, when we were discussing uh, discrete uh, random variables, I had shown you that how uh, a Poisson probabilities can approximate your binomial probabilities, uh, but then of course, the condition was that p is small and n is large and n p is moderately small uh, is reasonable number, then Poisson may give a good approximation for the uh, binomial probabilities. So, with this word of caution of course, we can uh, these approximations can be used and they are very helpful. Um, and so, I just thought that uh, once we have talked about the central limit theorem, we have proved it and shown its applications. I will just revisit uh, what we had done earlier, uh, when we talked about uh, approximating the binomial probabilities by standardizing the uh, variate normal variate and come and uh, reducing it to a standard normal variate and then computing the probabilities. Okay now, which has uh, problems uh, for you to try on Chebyshev's inequality, central limit theorem and law of large numbers, weak law of large numbers. Now, the first problem is straightforward. It says that a random sample of size n equal to 81 is taken from a distribution with mu equal to 128 and standard deviation sigma equal to 6.3. With what probability can we assert that the value we obtain for x bar will not fall between 126.6 and 129.6 Chebyshev's inequality. So, you can see that it will be uh, you know the you will have the absolute value. So, x bar minus when you uh, essentially are saying that would be um, uh, greater than um, 129.4 and less than 126.6. So, I have given it specifically, because I want you to then convert it to you know, in the form of the, you know, when you are saying that it is uh, when you apply Chebyshev's inequality or the central limit theorem. Okay. So, uh, we have already tried uh, given exam, I have discussed examples, uh, where you can uh, compute uh, both the uh, you know you can compute the um, uh, probabilities, given that your n is 81 and the standard deviation and mean are given to you. Uh, now, I just want to uh, make a comment here is that you see uh, it as we have seen through examples uh, in the lectures that uh, you know the number n uh, yeah for example, the uh, probability that you get uh, the bound that you get by using Chebyshev's inequality um, uh, on the probability on the required probability uh, would be um, a loose bound and the central limit theorem will give you a tighter bound a tighter uh, this thing on the probability. Now, uh, the thing and of course, um, uh, you can also say that, um, but uh, one point that is important is that the probability when you compute it by the central limit theorem, uh, may uh, sometimes depend on the uh, distribution that you have uh, handling, whereas Chebyshev's is a universal uh, inequality. And therefore, uh, it may give you a loose bound, but then it uh, the number does not change with respect to uh, big, uh, with respect to different distributions. So, Chebyshev's is a general statement, a universal statement. And later on, when I have occasion, I will again point out the uh, difference uh, between the, uh, even though we say that Chebyshev's is a loser uh, bound, uh, there are other advantages of using the Chebyshev's inequality. Uh, question 2, let the random variables uh, y n have a distribution that is binomial n p, prove that y by y n by n converges to p in probability. So, this is the use of um, uh, your weak law of large numbers. And I may have already done it for you in the uh, lectures, but anyway go through it and try to prove it by yourself. Uh, then the third problem is consider the sequence of x n, consider the sequence x n of random variables, where um, p n is x, probability of x n equal to x is 1, if x is 4 plus 2 by n um, and 0 otherwise. So, now here uh, you see uh, the probability, so x n is equal to x, the probability of that is equal to 1, if x is 4 plus 2 by n does it converge in distribution to some random variable x. So, that means, find out the uh, you will define the um, cumulative distribution function as n goes to infinity, can you find uh, 
uh, uh, distribution bridge. If so, find the distribution function of x, show that um, the sequence x n converges in probability to x also. Okay. So, um, should be interesting thing, but we go by the basic definitions and then try to uh, solve the problem. Okay. On x 2, x n are identically independently distributed random variables with density function f x equal to 1 by theta and um, 0 otherwise. Yeah, it should be equal to this 0 less than theta less than infinity. Uh, let f m n be max of x 1, x 2, x n. Okay. So, m n is the random variable, which is the maximum of these uh, n sample values. Find the distribution function f n of m n. Does, so, does f n converge to some f? Um, yes, it will and see, but we will not talk much about it, because okay, the second part is a little um, difficult part, but you can certainly see that f n will converge to some f. So, uh, find the distribution function f, f, um, f n of m n. So, that part is okay that you can do through the uh, tools that you have already learned, uh, right. Because uh, when you find out the uh, uh, to find the distribution function, you have to say probability m n less than or equal to t. Now, since m n is the max of x 1, x 2, x n, this will uh, reduce to a probability that each x 1 is less than t, x 2 is less than t, x n is less than t, less than or equal to t. And since they are independent, this will uh, reduce to probability x 1 less than or equal to t raised to n. So, therefore, uh, you can uh, sort of do it uh, in the regular way and then see if you can get a feeling for, uh, uh, for the, uh, the convergence of f n. That is all, we will not talk uh, uh, in detail about it, because this becomes a little complex. Uh, if you uh, if you are given that f x is 1 upon x square and x varies from 1 to infinity 0 elsewhere. So, this is how you are defining this uh, p d f and this is the p d f of a random variable x. Consider a random sample of size 72 from the distribution having this p d f. Right. So, they, that means the sample identically independently distributed random variables, there are 72 of them. Compute approximately the probability that more than 50 of the items of the random sample are less than 3. See, the thing is now is that uh, the problem I have included is problem, because there is two steps. See, first is that um, you want that uh, probability that more than 50 of the items of the random sample are less than 3. So, there is a probability, I um, will use this here. See, you are given that f x is 1 by x square, 1 less than x less than infinity. right? So, you are wanting to find probability x less than or equal to 3. This is the problem. right? that more than 50 of the items of a random sample are less than 3. So, this is x less than or equal to 3, this will be uh, 1 to 3 of 1 by x square d x, right. The probability that a random variable which has this p d f. So, then the probability of x less than or equal to 3 will be given by this, which is minus 1 by x from 1 to 3, right. So, this is comes out to be um, minus 1 by 3 plus 1, which is 2 by 3. So, now what I will do is, you are you are selecting a sample of size 72 and we will say that, if a sample has a value less than 3, then that is a success. So, therefore, the probability of a success would be 2 by 3. So, now this gets converted to a binomial random uh, binomial situation. So, where we are uh, selecting a sample of size 72 and we say that if a sample value is less than 3, uh, then it is uh, a success. So, that means, uh, uh, now the question is that with a from a binomial 72 uh, comma p uh, 2 by 3, I want a sample of the item. So, more than 50. So, that means, you want that um, uh, if you are writing sigma x i. So, uh, random variable x coming from binomial 72, maybe I can write it here. So, essentially I, what I am treating is that x is binomial 72 and this is this. So, I am wanting that probability x is greater than or equal to 50. And so, when you standardize this will be x minus 
uh, the mean is uh, 2 by th 3 into 72, which is uh, this is uh, 24. So, 48, 48 and uh, that will be um, 1 by 3. So, 9 16 4. So, this is greater than or equal to 50 minus 48. Oh, uh, that is 4, uh, this this comes out to be 9 8 sigma right, by 4. So, this is the whole thing. Okay. So, that is why I chose this example. So, therefore, um, you have converted this to a uh, binomial situation and then you are computing the uh, approximate probability that more than 50. So, here again I am now using the central limit theorem, I am uh, standardizing the uh, normal, the variate there and then so, therefore, therefore, you are computing the approximate probability, because to compute the actual probability would be, you know, you will have to sum up those 72, 50 and the binomial probabilities for 50, 51, 52 and 72. Okay. Fine. So, this is this problem. Now, let us go to measurements are recorded to several decimal places. Each of these 48 numbers is rounded off to the nearest sum of these integers. So, when you say rounding off, uh, that means, if a sum of the original 48 numbers, uh, if, if the decimal is uh, below uh, 0 0.5, uh, uh, below 5, then you uh, uh, reduce, you drop the uh, decimal number point and if it is 0 0.6, 0 0.7, then you uh, take it to the next integer. This is how we uh, say that you, when you round off the numbers, right approximate by some of these integers. If we assume that the errors uh, made by rounding off are independent and have uh, uniform minus 1 by 2, comma 1 by 2 distribution, compute approximately the probability that the sum of the integers is within 2 units of the true sum. So, now here uh, we are assuming that the errors made by the rounding off are independent. Surely, that you can expect, because the uh, errors that occur are not dependent on each other. So, and then this, so therefore, the rounding off that you are doing is between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. As I said, if the, if the number is something like uh, 10.4, then you will write it, round it off to 10. If the number is um, 9.7, you will round it off to 10 uh, integer. So, therefore, uh, you are assuming that the error part that means, the actual number minus the rounding, uh, that difference is uniformly distributed between minus 1 by 2 and 1 by 2. Right. The approximate probability that the sum of the integers is within 2 units of the true sum. So, therefore, uh, what we are doing is, so you have uh, 48 errors, 48 numbers that you are rounding off. So, your uh, sigma and each is, uh, so uh, yes, I can again write here that your uh, see epsilon i is the uh, error in the ith number. Right. So, we are wanting that summation epsilon and each epsilon i is and this is a uniform minus 1 by 2, 1 by 2. Right. Each error is uniformly distributed. Now, you are wanting the probability that uh, this thing should be um, less than or equal to 2. I think this is the question, that the sum of the integers is within 2 units of the true sum. So, which means that, okay, so uh, uh, total, num total error that occurs should be within 2 of the original. So, that means, sigma epsilon i, i varying from 1 to 48, this should be within minus 2 and 2. Right the error can occur either on the, when you round down or you round up. So, therefore, uh, this total error, we are saying what is the probability that this error is within 2 of the original uh, sum, original sum of numbers. So, I have added up the errors and so, this sum should be uh, greater than or equal to minus 2 and less than or equal to 2. This is what we want to approximate this probability and that again by the use of central limit theorem, we will say because uh, now epsilon i's are uh, all uniform. So, therefore, uh, <coughs> your uh, sigma epsilon i expectation of this i varying from 1 to 48 is because the mean is 0. So, this is 0. They are all independent. The errors we have assumed are independent and similarly, the variance, uh, variance of sigma epsilon i, i varying from 1 to 48 
will be sum of the variances and which will come out to be. So, the variance here is remember it is b minus a whole square raised to uh, uh, b minus a whole square divided by uh, 12, uh, b minus a whole square by 12. right? So, this is um, um, the variance here is 1 by 12 and so variance this will be uh, uh, 48 by 12. So, the variance will be 48 by 12 and therefore, um, standard deviation will be under root of 48 by 12. So, I standardize and here uh, this is what we get and then you know by the normal this thing. So, it says that probability. So, this is actually equal to probability mod uh, z is less than or equal to uh, this is 48 by 12. So, this is 1 and that comes out to be 0 0.6826 from the normal tables. Of course, you have to do some more computations here and this will be. So, the, therefore, that means the error can be kept within uh, 2, the total errors of rounding up and rounding down can be kept within 2 uh, with probability 0 0.6826. So, that is a very uh, uh, this high probability, right. But if you uh, look at a loose upper bound, that means if you are suppose rounding up all the numbers, then this will be 0 0.5 into 48, which will be 24. So, that means, uh, you know, an upper bound on the uh, number of uh, total errors that can occur uh, can be going, can go up to 24, right. But um, here, this uh, the central limit theorem gives you uh, the idea that. Um, this uh, the probability that uh, the errors will be within 2 is, uh, is reasonably high. Okay. So, this is uh, something about the problem I wanted to talk to you about, okay. varying from 1, 2 and so on is a sequence of identically independently distributed random variables with expected value of psi n is mu and variance psi n is sigma square. Now, if S n is the sum of the first n uh, sample values show that S n upon n goes to mu with probability p. Okay. This is again just uh, uh, reiteration of the uh, weak law of large numbers and I want you to sit down and uh, work out the proof by yourself. Okay. So, X n show that m g f of as n goes to infinity t greater than distribution of y n. No, uh, n square, see the notation, because we could not get it. So, x n I am saying is chi square n. Okay. So, we have talked about the chi square n distribution also. So, here um, uh, this is the, uh, the notation, uh, it looks like in the, in the print, it looks like x n square, but it is actually chi square. Okay. So, x n is chi square n and then y n is uh, x n upon n. So, because again we wrote x n instead of chi, because chi was not coming out nicely. So, y n is x n upon n and show that uh, moment generating function of y n will go to e raise to t as n goes to infinity for t greater than 0. Right? So, the it is defined for t greater than 0. Okay. So, this you can um, uh, work out and then what is the limiting distribution of y n. So, once you get the limiting m g f of y n, then you will uh, be able to say what is the distribution of y n, limiting distribution of y n. This was the whole idea through this exercise and then show that uh, x n minus n, where so x n is actually chi square n. So, chi square n has mean n and variance to n. So, therefore, now we are um, uh, standardizing this. So, this is actually the use of uh, you know um, central limit theorem, because remember central limit theorem is convergence in law. So, x n minus n upon under root 2 n for n large will converge to a normal uh, standard normal variant. So, this is again uh, the central limit theorem. That x 1, x 2, x n are independent random variables with probability x i equal to 1 p and probability x i equal to 0 1 minus p for i varying from 1 to 2 n. That means, each x i, so x i's are identically independently distributed Bernoulli random variables p is of course, between 0 and 1 and it is unknown. So, this is what we have to estimate. Uh, 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 okay, I will get back to the this thing. So, now, uh, if you define S n as x 1 plus x 2 plus x n and you fix your t, right. Then, uh, the problem says uh, using Chebyshev's inequality, how large an n will guarantee that the probability of S n upon n minus p is greater than or equal to t. So, 
So, the probability of this event is less than or equal to 0 0.01, no matter what va value unknown p has. Right. So, uh, obviously, we are trying to say that the um, we want to find out how many sample uh, values we should take x 1, x 2, x n. So, that this ratio s n upon n or the average of the sample uh, values uh, is different from p by. So, uh, greater than or t we have fixed. So, the, this difference greater than t probability of that is less than 0 0.01. So, you want to use Chebyshev's inequality. Right. Okay. So, here uh, by Chebyshev's inequality, as we said, this is S n by n minus p. So, this you want greater than t probability of this and this you want less than or equal to uh, 0 0.01. Right. Now, by Chebyshev's inequality, uh, because this is um, uh, the, the variance of S n by n is because uh, remember, uh, now your S n is what? Uh, the um, um, each each x i is Bernoulli. So, therefore, this is binomial and so this is uh, uh, the variance of s n is n p q and so 1 by n this would be n square. So, this is uh, p q p q by n. So, therefore, by uh, Chebyshev's inequality Chebyshev's inequality this probability is uh, less than or equal to uh, this is p q by uh, by n into t square. Right. And this you want to be less than or equal to 0 0.01. So, now what it says is p is unknown. So, q is also unknown and therefore, um, uh, no matter what the value of p is. Now, since um, maximum of maximum of p q, we have already gone through this in the lecture also. Maximum p q is 1 by 4. Right. So, if I take the if I write the maximum value here, since n is in the denominator, so this will uh, I will get the value of n which is larger, uh, which is smaller. See what I am saying is that uh, this probability is less than or equal to 1 by uh, p q by uh, this uh, 1 by 4 into n t square, right? And this we want less than or equal to 0 0.01. So suppose I put this equal to 1, e equal to 0 0.01 then this tells me that my n should be equal to from here n should be equal to if you take n to this side it will be uh, 0 0.04 into t square right and since i have written see so this value has come so 1 by 4 is uh, the maximum value of pq so now that means for n greater than or equal to this uh, this will always be uh, satisfied less than or equal to 0 0.01 right can you see that See here, I am writing the maximum value. This upon n t square is less than this. So, n would be greater than or equal to this. So, I am taking it. So, if I put the maximum value here, then obviously, I get a value of n, which will meet this uh, inequality, right. Because n will be greater than. Uh, otherwise, if I write the actual value of p q, then uh, what I get the value of n would be smaller than what I am getting here. So, therefore, uh, you know this will always satisfy this inequality, this is the idea. So, therefore, by Chebyshev's inequality, this is the thing. Now, part two, uh, two says that um, using C L T find the approximate n needed. So, that now here you see uh, it has uh, put the word minimum of this probability and the probability here is the um, is the uh, complement of the uh, event that you had in the part a. right? So, therefore, it is the same thing, because here the probability of less than t is greater than 0 0.99. So, uh, the, exactly, but the minimum part I will explain again here, because this is uh, now by uh, central limit theorem, by central limit theorem uh, minimum this. So, minimum this probability will be attained when I put the maximum value of this. And therefore, uh, the minimum when you write this here, this will be twice phi and uh, root n into t and this is 1 upon 4. So, uh, 1 by 2, so that the 2 also comes here. So, this minus 1. So, that satisfies this and now you want to compute again this you want to say is equal to 0 0.99, which means that uh, 2 of phi 2 root n into t is equal to 1.99 and now you can continue. And in fact, uh, you will find out the value of t, because I think, uh, uh, well, okay, maybe we will complete the
problem. So, this is uh, 2 divided by this point 0.99 right? and the corresponding uh, z value here, I think from the tables if you look up your it says that 2 root n t is 2.57. I mean I think that is the thing and so you can compute uh, root n from here. And now, what it says is again, since you have the numbers, I mean in this case your n square comes out to your n comes out to be uh, equal to 2.57 divided by 2 uh, into t whole square. Right. And in the third part, it asks you to when you fix the value of t, I think the value of t is given 0.01 if you do this, then it wants to um, wants you to compare. So, for example, from here, when t is this, for t equal to 0 0.01, uh, n comes out to be equal to 250,000. Right. And then, when you compare it for uh, uh, with the central limit thing, I think this comes out to be, uh, well, it is computed somewhere, I have done it here, 1 6, yeah. So, your n will be greater than or equal to 16500. So, this is the idea, because the uh, Chebyshev's inequality gives you a uh, loose upper bound. And therefore, uh, the numbers will be uh, different. So, this is the idea behind this thing and now you can sit down and work it out yourself to get a better feeling. Okay. Is equal to 1.99 and now you can continue. And in fact, uh, you'll find out the value of t because I think. Uh, uh, well, okay, maybe we will complete the problem. So this is uh, two divided by this point nine nine, right? And the corresponding uh, z value here, I think, from the tables, if you look up, your it says that two root n t is two point five seven. I mean, I think that's the thing. And so, you can compute uh, root n from here. And now, what it says is again, since you have the numbers, I mean in this case your n square comes out to your n comes out to be uh, equal to 2.57 divided by 2 uh, into t whole square. Right. And in the third part, it asks you to when you fix the value of t, I think the value of t is given 0.01. If you do this, then it wants to um, wants you to compare. So, for example, from here, when t is this, for t equal to 0 0.01, uh, n comes out to be equal to 250,000. Right. And then, when you compare it for uh, uh, with the central limit thing, I think this comes out to be uh, well. It's computed somewhere. I have done it here. One six. Yeah. So your n will be greater than or equal to 16500. So, this is the idea, because the uh, Chebyshev's inequality gives you a uh, loose upper bound. And therefore, uh, the numbers will be uh, different. So, this is the idea behind this thing and now you can sit down and work it out yourself to get a better feeling. Okay.